What's up, everybody? It's the Welcome to the Show podcast brought to you by Audible. Go to audibletrial.com forward slash welcome to the show to get a free audio book download and a 30 day free trial. That's audibletrial.com forward slash welcome to the show. On the show today, we have Dale Bartek of Athletic Training Systems. You can follow Dale and his brother Dave at Athletic Baseball Performance on Instagram. Athletic is spelled with the K. That's A T H L E T E K. And if you go to athletictrainingsystems.com, you can find many of their programs that they have to offer. Uh, these are these are guys who use researched, tested, proven workouts and 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 routines that will improve your performance on and off the field. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, we were really glad to have Dale on the show. He was very generous with us. He he answered all of our questions. He was very patient. I mean, given that we're two guys who who love the game, who play the game on an amateur level, uh, he took a lot of our ignorant questions and and ran with it. And he he had really thoughtful and great answers. So we really appreciate everything that 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 you know he was able to. All the knowledge that he was able to impart on us, um, you guys should follow these guys over at uh, on Instagram at at Athletic Training Systems and at Athletic Baseball Performance. Um, there, you'll see that they post workouts all the time and routines that you can work on to improve your performance on the field. And they're just a, a great follow overall, and, and they're a good group of guys. And uh, we're really glad that they came on the show. So, without further ado, here's Dale Bartek. how did you get into this business sure man well for me it started up um i grew up in florida and that's where i played my high school ball um from there i went on to play college ball at piedmont college in georgia i was a shortstop um played on a few great teams up there with my brother dave uh we had some nationally ranked teams played in the regional tournament just the whole experience for me of growing up playing ball was a ton of fun. Um, but for me personally, you know, I was always an undersized player and things didn't, didn't come easy, you know, as you can imagine. And I was always looking for that edge to compete. And that's sort of how, you know, I and, and my brother included, we ended up finding uh, strength training and, for me, it eventually led me to becoming a physical therapist and doing what I do now. I see that you you have a doctorate in physical therapy. How long have you been doing this for? Oh my goodness! Sometimes I feel like I've been doing it for fifty years. But <laughs> I um I graduated with my doctorate in two thousand sixteen. Okay. And I spent seven years getting that, so that's why I feel like it's taken so much longer sometimes. I get it. <laughs> um, <laughs> go ahead. Do you, yeah. Uh, uh, do you do you spend most of your time like uh, uh, rehabilitating players that are that are coming back from injuries, or do you do you spend time just training guys that are trying to get stronger that aren't injured? That's, yeah, that's a good question. Really, I mean, it's it's a little bit of both. You know, uh, for me personally. Um, I do, I do a lot of strength training with the athletes and I also do a lot of rehab too. Um, you know, and when we're talking about baseball, I mean, it's basically baseball is a pattern overloaded sport, overload, overload sport, I should say. Um, yeah. The same movements are replicated over and over again throughout the season. When we perform the same movements over and over again, we're, we're putting our body at risk for the muscle imbalances and overuse related injuries associated with it. So um, we can decrease this risk by taking, you know, the right measures. And so that's where I come in as, as a trainer and I work with guys kind of to um, prevent injuries from occurring. And that's where, you know, the strength training and the mobility training comes in. But, uh, you know, it's inevitable that guys are going to get hurt. And then that's where I come in also and try to get them back on track to being back on the field again, too. So a, a little bit of both. Yeah. 
do you see that guys are getting more injured now? Because it seems like in, in Major League Baseball, it seems like guys are landing on the DL like crazy. And I don't know if it's attributed to the 10-day DL. But they're just using it to open up a roster spot or if it's just something else. Like, do you have you noticed more injuries lately or is it just our, you know, are we just imagining this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I know what you're saying. It's... Um... It, it makes you wonder because, yeah, I mean, when you turn on the TV, it, it seems like a lot of guys are getting injured. More and more guys are getting injured every day. Uh, the 10-day DL is a factor. You know, I don't even speculate on what, what's going on there. But, I mean, if you just look at the simple biomechanics of throwing a baseball, mm-hmm. it's insane. I mean, the shoulder, uh, especially for some of these pro guys who are throwing 100, 105 miles an hour now, yeah. uh, the shoulder rotates at 7,000 degrees per second which makes it it's one of the fastest motions in sports. So we can't ignore the effect that that's having on, on our body and on our joints, you know? So as guys get stronger and guys are throwing harder, um, it's inevitable that, you know, these injuries are, are going to accompany that uh, load that's being placed on them, you know? So I can't say for sure, you know, is more, more injuries happening. I don't know, you know, but I know that, just in the game of baseball in general, um, it's a tremendously underserved population, and there's a lot of guys who are, are dealing with, with injuries, and not just at the pro level, but at any level, you know. Yeah. yeah. And then, Yo, go ahead. Go ahead, Randy. Okay, so then, and then I think about bigger guys, too. I think about guys like CeCe Sabathia, guys like Bartolo Colon, David Wells when he used to pitch, uh, Levon Hernandez when he used to pitch. And these guys were considered workhorses. And I don't know if this is just me being, you know, stupid or whatever. I'm not a doctor. My wife is a doctor. I'm not a doctor. But um, <laughs> is is it is it possible that these guys who are bigger, who probably have more fat in their body, it, that, that they, you know, maybe there's not so much bone and bone action and that's why they didn't get injured as much as, as these uh, slimmer guys? Or is this just, you know me being dumb <laughs> yeah that's uh and it's a good question man because i mean you wonder um you know is there a correlation to body size and injury prevention i don't know i mean there's definitely a correlation to body size and your ability to produce more power and to be able to throw the ball harder and hit the ball harder but also um you know it makes you wonder are these stronger guys uh in a better position to produce um more power with less injuries it's hard to say but i mean what we do know is that you know strength functional strength in the game of baseball i mean it plays a huge role in keeping yourself healthy so it's as simple as this the stronger you are um the better your capacity to perform is going to be and the less chance you have it at getting injured is you know so yeah guys like cc sabathia pushing what 300 pounds you know um (laughs) It's hard to say, man. I don't know. Maybe there's something to it. Maybe we need to start feeding everyone cheeseburgers too. <laughs> That's a scary thought right there. Just to <laughs> get a, sure. <laughs> just have the biggest guys on the mound just <laughs> just yeah, falling off the mound. The well, I mean yeah. that's uh there's there's a place for being big in some other sports. You know, I mean if you look at offensive linemen in football, I mean you're looking at some of the biggest guys on the planet, you know. Yeah. It makes you wonder what they would do with a baseball or a baseball bat too, you know. So they are going back to the that crazy number that we're going to see a lot more of in the future, 105 miles per hour. Like as yeah. an expert, as an expert of the human body is, is it, where, where does it end? Are we, are we, are humans going to push themselves to the point that they're throwing beyond that? And I mean, is that going to just speed up injuries? Is it, I'm, I'm just trying to wrap my head around yeah. how we got, yeah. how we got to this point. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I mean, I'll, I'm scratching my head sometimes thinking the same thing. What we know in, you know, the baseball performance world is that throwing a baseball that hard requires an extreme range of motion, you know, much more than the average person, right? So, I mean, in order to throw a ball 105 miles an hour, you have to have an extreme amount of external rotation in your shoulder. Um, with that extreme range of motion, it puts your shoulder at risk of instability and essentially injury. Um, 
but as far as sports performance goes, uh, a lot of great trainers and therapists like myself are trying to understand, well, how can we push the limits of range of motion while also maintaining the control throughout that range of motion to keep ourselves safe, you know, because it's basically, um, if, if simply, if I can get the arm further back, it's sort of like a rubber band effect. The further back the arm can go, the, the harder it can spring forward, you know? So if I can get my arm back into external rotation safely and be able to control that range of motion, have enough stability in my muscles and joints, um, I'm going to put myself, you know, in, in, in a good, in a good position to be able to perform at an extreme level and stay safe doing it, you know? Yeah. And so, so is there a player that you watch now? Like, like when I see, I forget who is this kid out of uh, St. Louis that, that touched 105 last season. I can't remember. Oh, his name. Uh, wow. I can't, I can't remember believe, his name. I can't believe I'm not, I'm, I'm forgetting the name as well. And then you have a Raldis Chapman who has his own filter on on baseball savant because he throws so hard. Um, is there someone that you watch and you say to yourself, "Oh my God, that guy's arm's gonna go any minute"? Like I look at I look at I'm a I'm a Yankees fan. I look at a Raldis yeah. Chapman and and I I want I say to myself, I wish this guy would teach himself a breaking ball or something so he doesn't blow his arm out because we need him for the next couple of years. I couldn't agree with you more. That. <laughs> it's funny you bring him up because that is the guy I use as my example. Um, when anyone ever asked me that question, you know, cause every time you watch him throw the ball, you know, I, I almost cringe thinking like, Oh my gosh, is, is this the one, is this the, is this the pitch that's going to blow his arm out? But um, you look at a, a, a player like that and there's no doubt that he spends time working on his strength, working on his mobility and a hundred percent that has uh, an effect on his ability to go out, and, and do that, you know, but yeah, he, he's the guy. I, it, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I look at him and say, man, just, just throw it softer. Just please for your own sake, you know, <laughs> Jordan, Hicks, he, Jordan, yeah. Jordan Hicks was the guy, Jordan, by the way. There it is. Jordan Hicks, the fact checker. Yeah. Jordan Hicks, sure. Sure. <laughs> and then you have guys like Masahiro Tanaka who had, a, who has an elbow issue and he seems like a ticking time bomb when he, when the Yankees signed him, uh, there was, questions about whether or not he should have Tommy John surgery and he opted not to and he seems to be holding up so far um what you know what what could you say about somebody like that like what you know could he you know finish out the rest of his contract with the Yankees I think he has two or three more seasons left without yeah. getting hurt or is it a matter of time is it you know what I mean yeah it's it, it's so hard to say and, and and that's the thing you know if if we knew for sure um as doctors, as trainers, as therapists, if we knew the answer to these questions for sure, um, just overall, the way we manage players would be different, you know, but as far as Tommy John's surgeries go, uh, doctors have done a fantastic job at perfecting that surgery. And a lot of the, the guys that are coming back from Tommy John, these guys are going right back to where they were. And some of them are thrown even harder, you know, mm -hmm. so there's a lot of great research that has gone into that, the rehab for it, the, surgical intervention for it um for someone who's dealing with medial elbow issues it's i mean it's fairly common you know so i can understand why you wouldn't want to take a whole season off but at the same time when it's time it's time you know mm -hmm. so that's that's they, they sort of leave that up to the the medical staff you know to kind of decide you know is this player is this player a candidate for the surgery is this player going to benefit from the surgery and what happens if he doesn't get it? You know, it's it's a great question. Right. Yeah. I have a I have a question. It's related to what we're talking about, but it's a little bit. It's just more like a myth that I want Dale to kind of either <laughs> you know shed some light on. Uh, Araldus Chapman does it. He throws with a weighted ball. Now I I hate when I'm playing catch and the person I'm playing catch with just whips out a weighted ball and just starts hurling it at me like i i hate it there, <laughs> well there, there's danger to that right tell you. Yeah. yeah yeah oh yeah they, yeah no i see it it's always colored like in that blue rubbery stuff and right right yeah and so is 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 there some real danger in in using that because i know a lot of guys that use it and is there also a danger in playing softball not not just playing softball, but i feel like as 
as men, we we do everything with a little bit more strength and force. So like, I try to throw a softball the way I throw a baseball. It's, it's uncomfortable. But uh, is there any danger to the weighted balls and softballs? Sure, I'm I'm really glad you you brought this up because this is kind of a hot topic, and I get this question a lot from younger athletes and stuff, people who are trying to throw the ball harder. You know, should I throw the weighted ball? Um, is it going to help me get stronger? Is it going to help me get better? And and the theory behind the weighted ball is, is pretty simple. I, I'll kind of go back to the fact I was talking about how guys who throw the ball hard have an extreme amount of external rotation in their shoulders. Um, the idea behind the weighted ball is that when you throw a weighted ball, it improves the layback of your arm. It helps your arm get further back so that you can produce more torque coming forward. With that being said, weighted balls, they can be a fantastic training tool for someone who is ready for them, right? And by ready, I mean someone who has adequate strength, adequate stability, adequate body control, someone who's been training with weights, someone who's been throwing for long enough, Really, I wouldn't recommend it for anyone uh, that's not at least a college player or for some college players, it's not even appropriate. It just depends on your level of conditioning and your level of training. Um, because if you start throwing around a weighted ball before you're ready, you're, you're challenging the, the stability demands of the shoulder in a way that you can no longer control it. So you're basically stretching out the front of your shoulder and – which will inevitably lead to, to a whole host of shoulder injuries. So yeah, I like weighted balls. I recommend the use of weighted balls. I just, I caution players that make sure that you're using them wisely and make sure that you're ready to use them. So I, I don't have any young guys throwing around weighted balls. Um, I wait till players have been training for, for long enough to demonstrate the body control and the stability demands of, of having weight in that position. You know, I hope that answers the question. It's, it's a, I could write, I could write for, for days on that one. That's a, yeah. Yeah. No, it, 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 it makes, it makes perfect sense. Like, uh, yeah. I, I probably won't be throwing a weighted ball because I'm, I only throw when it's warm out and right. I, I guess it's like the same thing as like strength training. What are those exercises? The, the, the clean pools, where the where they have the the bar at the bottom and they lift it up and over their head and they throw it back down. Oh, you sure. also, yeah. yeah, 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 like a power clean, yeah. Oh, power cleans, yeah, yeah. You also wouldn't. I also wouldn't walk into a gym and do that on the first day. So it's like, sure, yeah, it, it and, makes and, and, and makes sense. That's a, that, that's a great analogy. I mean, you you have to crawl before you can walk, walk before you can run. You know, and as far as yeah. throwing training rows, weighted balls is that's running. You know, you, you have to, you have to build up to that yeah. point. You know? So, and you know, the, the, the fact of the matter is, is when you're dealing with, with baseball players, you have to understand the demands of the specific player that you're working with or under, if you're a baseball player, you have to understand your demands, you know, have someone there that can help you find out what you need to be working on. You know, for instance, I have, um, some elite uh, Division One pro prospect college players that I work with, and um, they're great pitchers, and they they could be using weighted balls. However, when I look at some of them, I understand that hey, well, this guy is dealing with an anterior instability in his shoulder, and he's definitely not a candidate to throw around a weighted ball. So you know, it's just kind of breaking down the individual player and deciding, hey, is this is this something that's going to help you or something that's going to hurt you? So let me dial it back a little bit. I'm going to take it back to guys, to, to big league players. I'm not going to talk about the weight anymore. I feel kind of dumb for even bringing that up. But um, so, yeah, <laughs> so old, how about the old school plays? You, you always hear about, you know, these guys are fragile. They can't, you know, throw a complete game anymore. Um, what do you attribute – the old school style of pitching guys like I think it was like Warren Spahn or something or was it Juan Marichal through like 18 innings one in one game or something yeah was it just that guys just like were able to handle the pain better back then or you know what is it you know like what do you attribute that to yeah it's it's that's another another good topic to bring up 
it seems like, you know, like, I mean, if you just look at guys like uh, Cal Ripken Jr. and, and, and his record of, of games played mm-hmm. consecutively, I mean, we're looking at records that are never going to be broken. And, and it's because, you know, maybe the culture of the game was different and, you know, guys were more willing to go and grind it out every day. Um, what we know is that the sports performance world now versus, versus 20, 30 years ago, we're, we're way past what they were doing then. So as far as physical preparation goes, our guys are ready. You know, our, our, our baseball players that are playing the game today are more physically prepared than they've ever been before. But you're right. They are ending up on the DL more. They are taking more days off. And my best guess, man, is it's just that the culture of the game is slightly changed and guys are no longer willing to be as uncomfortable as, as maybe they used to be, you know? Mm-hmm. But they can still do. You, in your opinion, do you think that if they were okay with feeling a little uncomfortable, that they could potentially pitch through some of these things, or you know, is that something you wouldn't sure. advise as a as a sure. you, you know, know as a doctor? You know, there's a lot of factors that go into it, man. You know, but um, obviously, you know, your 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 best chance at staying away from injuries is obviously to listen to your body, you know? So for guys that are going out and they just feel worn out, they feel run down, their velocity's down. That's another thing, you know, we have so many metrics now that we're looking at like velocity and spin rate and things like that. So um, a lot of these guys are, you know, they're making a distinction whether they need to take a day off or take a week off based off of, based off how they're feeling. Now, if they were to go out and grind it out, would they be okay? It's hard to say, you know, a lot of them probably would. I just don't think there's as many guys and there's as many coaches. There's as many trainers that are willing to take that chance. You know, that's what I think it is. And here's another, just from, you know, being the layman person who just watches baseball. I love the game of baseball. Clayton Kershaw just uh, was just shut down from throwing, and apparently it's because he has dead arm. And we saw this last year with with Josh Donaldson, who's typically yep, a really sure. good third baseman. What what mm-hmm. is dead arm? What causes it, and like how do you how do you get past it? Yeah, that's a good question because you hear that uh, term float around a lot. But yeah. for me, uh, the term dead arm to me basically is an all encompassing term for saying, Hey, my arm is not performing the way that it needs to be performing. Uh, going back to what I said a minute ago about some of the metrics, you know, we know how hard we're throwing. We know how fast our ball is spinning. We know these things. And when we look at it and we see that our arm is not performing the way that it needs to, uh, we panic, you know, so we, we throw a, a blanket term, dead arm and shut it down and try to go back to the drawing board and figure out what it is that is making our arm not perform well, you know? So it's something that you see a lot. And I get a lot of players who ask me through social media or, you know, just clients of mine that say, Hey, you know, like my velocity is down, my arm feels dead, my arm feels weak. And I usually recommend the same thing. You know, it's, it's, Hey, you know, let's, let's shut it down for a minute. Let's, let's focus on some arm care stuff. Let's kind of assess your body and, you know, and just hope that it comes back, <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, the, the workouts that you have on your, uh, on your website, is this something like, or, or, is it like a combination of all, or is it just like pick one and just stick to that? Yeah. I'm, I'm seeing like a pull workout, a push one. There's a, oh, there's sure, a lot sure. of good information on the, on the so, website. We have, um, my brother and I, you know, we we started our company, you know, athletic training systems and baseball performance, just with the simple goal of trying to help as many guys as we could get the guidance and the instruction that they need to stay healthy and really just dominate on the field. You know, to to look at the other aspects of the game off the field that they may be um, they may be missing. You know, so. On our social media, you know, we have a ton of content on there, just a ton of exercise clips, some workouts that we kind of like to use, just some some uh, standard stuff, you know, that we, that we kind of use with with, with with our players. And we put together uh, a series of comprehensive baseball strength training, training programs 
based on the information that we've gathered, you know, over the last 10 years of doing this and work as a therapist and everything else. And, um, basically, you know, what it is, is it's, it's all based around the idea of gaining strength, improving mobility and decreasing risk of injury, you know? So there's a whole bunch of stuff on there, you know, and, and it's all designed to help guys get better. Yeah. Now I'm going to ask, uh, some, you know, I, maybe for you, not so interesting questions, but for me, it's pretty interesting. I see <laughs> <laughs> on your website, I, I, uh, I saw that you've worked with, uh, with MLB players, Olympic gold medalists, NCAA athlete, NCAA athletes, I was going to say AAA. I don't know why. Um, could you name some names? Who have you worked with? Sure. And, and what were some of the results from, from that? Um, from a, a baseball performance uh, standpoint, probably the most interesting one that you'd like to hear about would be, especially as Yankee fans, would be uh, Troy Tulowitzki. Oh, nice. Nice. And he, um, I did a lot of physical therapy related work with him. We were doing some dry needling and some other kind of soft tissue related uh um, interventions with him. He was kind of, you know, dealing with those injuries, as you know, over the last few years and, um, just trying to get his body feeling good again. You know, for him, it was a big thing. Just, uh, he knows his body really well and he knows what it takes for him to, uh, to go out and be able to play his best every day. And so, you know, we put in the work and it's just good to see him back out on the field. You know, that's, um, that's one of my, my athletes I've worked with. And then we've got uh, just a whole ton of college players. Um, I did some work with uh, some Olympic gold medalists who were uh, gymnasts. Mary Lou Retton was one of them. I don't know if you guys ever remember her or not. Nope. But, um, <laughs> I do. I do not. I'm sorry. Was, uh, <laughs> was Mary Lou Retton. Mary Lou Retton is kind of interesting because she was the first um, women women's gold medalist in gymnastics i want to say it was like 1980 or 1984 so i got to work with her a couple of years ago which is pretty cool she's obviously no longer working in gymnastics but she um she's still around it a lot and she's just an awesome person in general so i really enjoyed that but yeah i get to see a ton of college athletes not just baseball players too you know mm -hmm. um, soccer gymnastics uh, softball basketball football so it's really a treat to be able to work with people like that that's great. And um, yeah, man. I see that. So when I go on your Instagram page, I see athletic baseball performance and athlete, athletic training systems. Are they kind of the same thing or are they separate entities within that one company? That's a good question. Good question. Uh, I actually get this one a lot. Um, athletic training systems is the name of our website, as you know. Um, and, and that's sort of our all encompassing sports performance, injury prevention. We talk about nutrition related things on there. Um, that's sort of, um, a little bit broader spectrum for just overall training, dieting, sports performance, injury prevention. Um, some of that stuff, some of that content that, that we produce there, I use with other athletes too, not just baseball players. Mm -hmm. And then we have, um, our other entity, you know, athletic baseball performance, which is primarily run by my brother, Dave, and he, he runs that social media and everything. Um, that's more related mostly to baseball specific training and injury prevention stuff. So kind of two of, of the same things. We just have a, a slightly different umbrella for it. Okay. And so you're out of Vegas, you're from Florida. Who's your favorite mm -hmm. team? Who do you root for? Oh my gosh! Everyone asks me this question. They know what to say. Um, <laughs> I give us, give us, give us your, game. give us your players. Give us the players that you root for. I've got so many players, especially now. You know that I've gotten a little bit older, and I'm like watching some of the guys that I, I played high school ball with: Manny Machado, Wow, Javi Baez. You know, because I played ball in Florida. You know, Francisco Lindor. All these guys. These were names I remember hearing when I was in high school. You know, so. I really like to watch some of the young players. Bregman is great. Donaldson's great. Obviously, I keep up with my guy, uh, Troy Tulowitzki, and I hope good things for him. You know, So um, I just love the game, man. I love everything about the game. I love watching it. I don't have a team because there's so much moving around. You know, So many guys yeah. are moving around. So yeah. and Vegas doesn't have a team. We've got a triple-A team here. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the know, Mets, so and, they're, and they're Mets affiliated, aren't they? They're actually uh, – 
Oakland Athletics. They just uh, uh, switched over. Did, oh, did the Mets move? I was gonna yeah, say. Yeah, Mets move. Okay, because I mean, oh, wow. did you did you hear about this Brandon Nimmo thing? He under he no. got sick from undercooking chicken, so he can't play. <laughs> Only the Mets. <laughs> So thank God they left yeah, your your town. <laughs> I just uh yeah yeah get him out I of just, here. Yeah, <laughs> I just this oh. is this is so this is so off topic, but uh, on the athletic training systems website, the baseball link, I've just been I've just been sitting here watching this loop of all these players <laughs> like training and stuff. So whoever made this, you know, great job. I'm this, glad you like it. This man. loop, we, yeah. That took me forever to make that. We actually built our website by ourselves oh wow yeah, the, the website's really good i mean i learned so much doing that like it took me forever i, I should have just hired somebody and let them do it in a month but i spent like eight months doing that and it was actually it was, it was a good learning experience for me it was, it was a lot of fun to do but that video right there probably took two weeks so i'm glad you like it yeah That's it's great. amazing like, I've, I've been sitting here watching it the whole time and at first <laughs> i don't know why because of the way that baseball is with their with their merchandise and their players i don't know why you had i felt like these were lookalikes of the players until I saw like Ortiz and Mariana. I'm like, no, okay, like you couldn't fake this. <laughs> no, you can't fake that, man. Yeah. yeah, this is good. I'm glad you yeah. like it, man. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. So so if you want to check out the video, which it is really good, the website is really good. By the way, it's very easy to use, easy to find what you need to find on it. Um, you go to athletictrainingsystems.com. That's a t h l e t e k trainingsystems.com. And uh, thank you for coming on, Dale. That, this was great, man. Man, I had a blast with you guys. Thanks a lot for having me. Anytime. Thanks, All right, Dale. man. Take care. All right, guys. See ya. All right, everybody. That was Dale Bartek. And as I mentioned at the start of the show, the Welcome to the Show podcast is brought to you by Audible. Once again, go to audibletrial.com forward slash welcome to the show to get a free audio book download. Yes, it's the same Audible that's affiliated with Amazon. Yes, they have thousands of books available in their library. Yes, if you don't like the book, you can return it and exchange it for something else. Yes, if you sign up for a membership, you get a free you get free credits and free books each month. It's a great deal, guys. Go to audibletrial.com forward slash Welcome to the show, and your first free audiobook is completely on us, and you'll get a 30-day free trial with that. One more time, audibletrial.com forward slash welcome to the show. Something else that you should know, if you go visit on our website, wttspod.com forward slash save, there you will find some exclusive offers just for our listeners. I'm talking about 10% off of KD Custom Kicks. That's where guys like Aaron Judge, guys like... Uh, David Wright. All these professional athletes get their custom kicks. These are local dudes from Long Island and in New York. Uh, uh, Alex Katz, Anthony DeLucia. These are these are really good guys over at KD Custom Kicks. 10% off. Just go and visit our website, wttspod.com forward slash save, and you'll get the discount right there. Um, as always, our music is by VM Varga, and our incidental music, as they say, is by Returnal Music by Naughty Productions. And the artwork is by Luigi Gomez. And I'm Annie Gomez. Peace. <laughs>